Hey, Julie. Hey, Julie. How's it going? Hey, Ryan. Hey, Ryan. No? Hey, Amanda, you're taking uh, notes tonight, right? Hi, yes, yes okay. I am. That's what I, I'm like looking okay. for the right thing right now. <laughs> okay. I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure she said yes. people streaming in. I think we almost have everybody. One person, there we go. Does anybody know how I can change my name on the fly? I keep coming in on some of these with my wife and others with me, so. I, everybody knows, but can if uh, if you click on the little people icon down at the bottom that says participants, it should pull up a list of everyone in the meeting. Mm -hmm. And I think if you click on your own name and hit more, you might be able to change it. Or I could be have a mouse. You can also right click on your name and change it there. Oh, okay. Thank you. Right click on. Ah. All right. Thank you. Love technology. <laughs> we have a few more people we're waiting for. Hey, Sue. Are we waiting for Rebecca? Is Rebecca? I don't think she told me she wasn't going to make it, but I can double check my email. <laughs> Here's Chris. Hey, 
Chris. The only person that we're waiting for is Rebecca. So I'm going to give her another minute to make sure that she isn't trying to get connected. Real quickly, hey, Chris, uh, didn't mention this earlier, but love the background. I don't think of all the renderings that I ever saw that view. Uh, yeah, space. thank you. Surprise, it's finished. Yeah, it's, yeah, we're making major progress. But that is the uh, Research Center for the Arts interior. Oh. Love it. You're, you're on stage. <laughs> Here we go. Hmm. Talk to Rebecca and she's going to log on here in a minute. Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, I'm watching the waiting room, so when Rebecca shows up, I will let her in. Okay. Do you want to start then? All right. Welcome everyone to the Beaverton Art Commission virtual meeting, October 14th, 2020. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Bang, bang. Uh, all right. So council updates from Councillor Mark Sansusi. Okay. There you go. It looks like, it looks like I'm first. Oh boy. Um, but I'll, I'll give a quick update since we have a short meeting. Um, there, there's almost nothing going on at council. We're really bored. We have nothing to do. Um, it's tragic. So feel, feel sorry for us. <laughs> no, actually, um, obviously tonight is the voters forum. We have a, a, a new council seat next year. We'll have seven councilors. That's kind of exciting for us because we've obviously never been there before. We're spending a lot of time uh, dealing with the necessary steps to prepare us for the change in the structure of government. Um, we just finished uh, the, the interview process for the hiring of our uh, second associate judge for municipal court and all of this hiring of judges has been good practice for the process that we're going to use for the hiring of an interim city manager for the city. Obviously the, uh, the qualifications and the questions and the criteria and the judgments that we're going to make in doing that hire are going to be different. But the process is going to be very similar. Um, and it's one that's intended to respect the confidentiality of candidates who may not want to reveal that they are looking for a new posting. Um, but at the same time, we have to meet Oregon's public meeting laws. And so our city attorney has uh, developed a path for us to navigate in uh, following through that. And so uh, in the context of the judge hiring, uh, the next step is part of that process, which is a public viewing of the candidate or candidates that we consider to be finalists or finalists for that position. The same thing will happen with the interim city manager um, position. We will be seeing the applications that have been submitted pretty soon. We will have an executive session of the city council either next week or the week after where we will review those applications and decide who is going to be interviewed. Then there will be interview panels that will consist of the city councilors and the incoming city councilor or city councilors, depending on when it takes place, um, and the department heads and perhaps some other members of staff as well. And we'll interview those candidates, develop a, a list of finalists. The public will have an opportunity to hear from those finalists and give us feedback about um, those candidates. 
and then we will make a, another decision uh, about which of the candidates to actually make an offer to to become our interim city manager. The expectation being that this person would work with us through the first half of next year and help us go through uh, another time of soliciting applicants for the long-term city manager position. And the qualifications are different. The, the requirement we need for an interim city manager is somebody who's been there, done that, understands how to coach a, uh, a community in uh, in the world of city managers and council manager form of government, which Beaverton has not had since the 1970s. So um, we're looking for an experienced coach. And then for the long-term city manager, we'll develop a process that will involve the public to a higher degree because we want to make sure that, that city manager is somebody who understands the community and that the community supports from the very beginning. Um, so it's, it's a different set of qualifications and uh, we have not yet developed that process for the second hiring, but for the first hiring, we think we know what we're doing. So we're keeping pretty busy on that. And then our city attorney is very busy developing a list of documents that need to be modified because there are things in our city code and in our um, intergovernmental agreements that state that the mayor will do this and the mayor will do that and etc. Many of those references have to be changed to say the city manager will do this and the city manager will do that or the city council will do this and the city council will do that and uh, um, those kinds of things are what city attorneys get paid for <laughs> and uh, we've kept our city attorney's office quite busy developing that list. We'll be talking about that uh, set of modifications to city code and ordinances and intergovernmental agreements um, in the next couple weeks. Hopefully get most of that sorted out. And then the last major item we have of, of business is uh, after the election on November 3rd, we will know who's filling the new city council seat. And we on the council and members of the staff will be doing their best to bring that person up to speed so they can start work in January. And that's a really short uh, ramp up time, two months. Usually in Beaverton, people get elected in May and they have six or seven months, like Allison did, uh, to prepare for the job. Um, this person will not have that much time. So, <laughs> and, and all three candidates have very little direct experience working with the city. So there will be some ramp up uh, involved. And of course, as you all know, tonight is the voters forum. So if you uh, happen to tune into that, you'll get to see who those candidates are. And uh, hopefully you'll uh, develop some good ideas about who to vote for. So I'll stop there. If there's anybody has any questions, oh yeah, and there's gonna be a minor little conversation with Chris Suzuki and his team coming up soon about the operating agreement between the city and the PRCA, but you know, whatever. <laughs> that should be automatic and routine, right, Chris? <laughs> hopefully. May I tag on to what Mark just presented about voters forum? The um, new um, Beaverton City Council position six, only two of the candidates will be present tonight. One canceled last night. Okay. So, you can your uh, voters pamphlet. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you, Councilor Sansusi. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, any other comments? Questions? We'll move on to public comment. And we have Razia Roshan from Tualatin Valley Creates. Hi, good evening, everybody. Thank you for letting me invade all of your monthly meetings. Um, I just want to give you some updates from Tualatin Valley Creates. So, a um, couple of exciting things is even though we're entering into fall, we still have over a hundred activities on our online calendar. So if you and your family are looking for things to do from the safety of your own home, lots of virtual events that are online now, and I shared a number of links in the chat so you can go straight to our calendar and see what's going on. One of those things is on October 22nd, we are holding a fall fundraiser party via Instagram Live. So another one of those things you can do from your phone, your tablet, your computer, or your smart TV, which is actually what I highly recommend because we'll have performances from Roberto Gonzalez, who's a traditional commu um, Cuban musician, and a dance troupe, as well as a poetry reading by Jennifer Perrine. Uh, I also want to encourage you and to help share with your fellow arts networks to check the Tualatin Valley Creates resources page. We continue to update our COVID-19 page with funding that comes along, 
um, just other opportunities that are available for people as they stay in place or they're starting to reconstruct themselves. Uh, and that our directory is live and it's filling in. The arts and culture directory uh, includes artists and art service providers for Washington County specifically. So I included that link um, in the chat as well. And so if you're looking for other artists, if you're looking for people to collaborate with or you're looking for an artist in a different medium than your own, uh, check the directory and then also let us know um, if you'd like to be listed on the directory. It's just $125 for 12 months. And some of the fun highlights about Twilight Millie Creates website is that we have between 26,000 and 42,000 people visit our website in a year. So that money goes really far and we promote the directory, as you can see, to get more people engaged. Um, I'm gonna stay on, I'll probably turn my camera off so you can't see me in my winter clothing, uh, but I'm, I'm happy to be here and answer any questions if you have any. Awesome, thanks. Any questions? No? All right. We will move on to the approvals. Wait, Jim, did you? Are you guys waving? No, okay. <laughs> All right, the minutes from September 2020 back meeting. So has that everybody had a chance to read them? Thumbs up. Yeah, everybody's read them. All right, so would someone like to make a motion to approve the minutes? I move we accept the minutes as presented to us by um, virtual. Awesome, Sue, um, someone would like to make a second? A second. All right, Ryan made a second. Uh, all right, any discussion? All good. So, a vote. Just all in favor say aye. Let me see your thumbs or say aye. Aye. All right, thank you, Karen, Julie, Allison. Allison Balbag? All good with me. Okay, good. All right. Any nays? All right, so the meetings are approved. Next, uh, we have a fabulous presentation uh, from Jason Klamaski from Studio C K K C A. Sorry, uh, and we we like to have Beth. Would you like to speak about this? Sure. Um, our six public art committee members just got to hear this presentation uh, 15 minutes ago and we had a great discussion and um, I'm going to encourage them to speak after Jason presents about their thoughts and um, and they actually have a, a, a bit of a proposal for the full commission to think about um, maybe considering this the final presentation so that Jason can get going um, and but I'm going to let Jason uh, go ahead um, with his presentation. And again, this is for the fulcrum, which is the piece in the plaza that will go uh, in front of the PRCA. Um, and I'll just also add that this has been presented to the project team and the architects and they, they, were, um, they were excited about it as well. So um, we, I hope that you all are as well. So Jason, you can take it away. Good evening, everybody. Um, just wanna say we're real pleased to be a part of this uh, the development and to build a small piece uh, here on the site. I will, this will, I'll make it as quick as I can. Um, let me see if I can share my screen. I'm getting good at this. All right. Uh, so everybody can see this and hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, as Beth said, uh, this is the, the fulcrum. So um, on the east side of the of the PRCA building, uh, if I'm one half of studio, Leslie is my partner. Um, when we started thinking about this project, we thought about it as a, a piece in a three part conversation between the stage, uh, Beaverton Creek, and this small moment. So 
that was our thinking was how do we capture the, the, the language of the stage, specifically the, the kind of this backdrop and the creek. And as the creek, right there, the creek actually kind of swells forward. Um, we, we started looking at ribbons um, uh, first, specifically the kind of mechanical way that ballet slippers are tied with ribbons and then into uh, more of the, the poetry of the ribbon dance. Uh, and then how that relates to the creek itself, the way it kind of twists and turns and pulls and pushes its way through Beaverton. And, um, and then more, even more specifically about kind of the, 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 the dance of light, the play of light on the surface of the creek as it, as it moves, through the, moves through Beaverton. And that led us to creating this idea about a, a, a ribbon, a vertical ribbon with two sides. One side is the shell that relates directly to the PRCA building and the creek, which is a more reflective, um, carefully modeled um, surface. And how do we pull the creek up onto that plaza and the, the, the building itself around? So kind of uh, create this dance um, using the two sides of the ribbon vertically at this spot. Uh, and this is what we came up with. It, about 20 feet tall, so pretty tall, um, touches the ground very, very lightly at one spot. Uh, one side is um, highly reflective aluminum or steel, and the, we'll put some laser into it that evokes of carved when you use traditional uh, hand tools to carve wood, you get these kind of V grooves. And we want to build that into a language that um, talks to the wood, but also talks to uh, the rippling surface of the water. And the other side of that ribbon, smooth and, and clean, um, either using flat sheet plate or, or, or rods. Um, this is a, a rendering of what it would look like as you came up from the bus station. You can see, what the what one side kind of the, the reflective side is focused back to the PRCA uh, and pulls the creek up onto that plaza, and this side pulls the building kind of up and around to kind of hold hold the shape and hold that corner. And then at night, um, it's all internally lit uh, using LED fixtures and. We want the light to kind of come emit from the riverside, the creek side, uh, and casts kind of soft shadows. I, um, obviously, this rendering is a, if everything was turned off and <laughs> around it. Um, but the, the, that's the idea, you know, this kind of soft play of light bouncing off of a reflective surface uh, and kind of capturing that, that, that curved motion. Um, that's it. That's the whole idea right there. What do you guys think? Uh, do any of the PAC members want to uh, share your thoughts? Because we had a robust discussion about this earlier. Yes, I'm, I'm hoping to hear from others in the BAC and see what they think before I share the opinions that we came to, if that's all right. Yeah, I think that's good. Impressions, uh, people. Uh, to to chime in, though, I think uh, what what the PAC uh, is saying in this meeting is they are moving it forward for recommendation to the BAC. So let's just making sure that's on the record. Yes, we're making uh, the recommendation for this to be the final design because we thought so much of this beautiful sculpture. I have a couple questions, if that works. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Okay, yes. great. Um, so uh, you say it's lit internally um, with LEDs and stuff. Is it uh, statically lit or is it dynamic? Does it um, does the light move or change color, or change hue, or is it um, or is it just a, a static glow and it uses um, uh, the ambient nature of the metal to do the shimmer that you were talking about? Yeah. It you're, yeah, you're right. It's, it, I think we're in like the four or 5,000 Kelvin range LED fixtures uh, that are static. We, we weren't going to mix in any kind of um, 
color uh, and we weren't going to mix in any movement like a, a wheel, um, which we've done before with uh, fiber optics. This is just, this is just, uh, yeah, going to glow and um, when the light reflects out of that surface, we think it's going to kind of create this interesting uh, effect. Uh, but, but right now it's just a fixed, it's a fixed fixture in like the, that four or 5,000 Kelvin range. Okay. No, that's great. Um, I always think about durability and things like this out in, in the middle of uh, it. Um, I, I like to see the art uh, maintain and last, um, you know, and sometimes when you, it, it gets a little too crazy with technology, it um, has issues later on and it never is what it once was, you know, and so, yeah. so I appreciate um, the thought in that, so. Anyone else? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> I think it looks dazzling. I think it's going to be astonishing. I, um, I love it. Great. Awesome. Nice. Well, some of the things that we talked about as a group, as we we're initially looking at it, were, you know, things like safety and you know, since it's a public piece in a public place, will people climb on it, you know, and um, uh, that was part of the discussion there. And then making sure that there wasn't going to be like, you know, some kind of hard light, you know, hitting a building or something that's unintended. So those were some of the sort of other things that we discussed and felt comfortable with. And, and we also agree on we like the vertical aspect of it as opposed to how like we do something like that stood up, uh, and uh, and we all had kind of things we saw. And we saw some other not so exact, but some use of reference in it, which is great. Um, and something that I thought of post meeting is that uh, again, it's a critical uh, sculpture um, that is unique from the one that's right next door at Three Creeks. So it just stands on its own. Um, I think it's very impressive, and and uh, and I think people will love it. Too. Yes, it's, it's very place making. I love the ripples on one side, but the cleanness of the other, that someone can walk up to it and see their image. And there'll be a lot of light and shadow play. So, very well done. Good. That's, thank you. It's good to hear. Is this something, uh, sorry, this is Ryan again. Um, is this something that um, uh, people can walk right up to and directly access or is it or is there a barrier or something between them and the piece there that's there's no barrier um this is something that people can walk up to and and directly access uh and we're gonna have to put some um consideration in into that with uh in terms of how we um, how robustly we make how robust we make the the lower portion to um, uh, take some abuse. Um, but yeah, we I don't I don't think if you there's no barrier planned, and I think that you would kind of ruin the plaza if you if you built a barrier around it. Um, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't disagree. Um, I think it's a phenomenal piece, um, and uh, I'm just thinking of the things to protect it, you know, and. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, on a practicality standpoint, I'd be concerned about graffiti. So, so wondering if, you know, there's a coating or something that could be placed on it so that, you know, we can maintain your work and, and, um, you know, um, people can enjoy it into the future. Um, you know, so I, I, I'm a facilities guy, so was, um, by trade, so I'm always thinking of uh, how to protect things, and especially something this um, great um, uh, uh, would be uh, the thing that I would consider most. So that's all I, I have. Fantastic work. What size is this on the on the part that meets the ground? Can you, can you repeat that, Karen? Oops. Sure. How texturized is the part that meets the ground? Because to Ryan's point, I was also thinking, and you know, who knows how it's going to be utilized, but 
<laughs> I can see skateboarders going and using it as a jump. Um, and I don't know if that could be texturized to the point where it would kind of deflect that kind of activity. The other point that I wanted to make is more of a, um, I, I love this application, the rendering. I love the material that's used. And in the way, it kind of carries on thematically to the lobby of the city building and the ribbons that are on the ceiling at City Hall. Oh, yeah. In a very different sort of way. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, I, um, well, that's, I, that's interesting. I, we didn't make that reference, but that's what's cool about um, creating a piece in the public realm, uh, the opportunity for it to relate to other things. The skateboarders, I, we have to really spend some time developing the materiality of at least the lower portion of it. Um, I didn't think of skateboarders. It's really, I, so uh, the, the, the answer that we give to, to um, well, I guess to Ryan's point first, um, there's a coating called nanocoat. I have, I can't promise that we can use it, but I can certainly, I can certainly price it out. Uh, and we, we have used it on other pieces that we've done. Uh, and it's a, it's, it's a, it's a final, it, it's actually permeates the, the, the several microns into the, the, the actual surface and it cleans up amazingly well. Um, it, uh, um, you can basically whatever gets on there you can almost wipe it you can wipe it off i can like we did a piece just finished a piece in denver and the nano coat uh i had the install crew wipe it down afterwards with um, some dirt and snow actually if you can believe it and it wiped off really easily um skateboarders are will be tough we we can we can this is part of the conversation that we we just had um with the uh, a, a few of the larger, a few of the, of, of the team was, um, do we um, heavily, um, do we heavily um, pattern the bottom portion? Um, and, and if we do that, to, in order to deter people from sitting on it, or do we, or do we uh, smooth it out and make it extra, extra strong so that it can take uh, any kind of unintended abuse um, in, in the future, or or, or take take a, a large amount of unintended abuse in the future. And I don't have a, I don't really have a good answer um, about what approach, except to say that when we start working on the fabrication drawings and construction, we'll um, focus on on that. Like we'll definitely beef up the structure inside. Um, and then we'll have to do a few pattern tests to see what makes sense on that lower portion. Um, we could also put a small, yeah, there's all, we could also put a small lip, like a little four inch lip on the part that you would might, you might want to approach if you're on a skateboard so that it makes it kind of impossible to actually, um, 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 kick up onto it, I think. Um, but yeah, those are those are valid points that we'll we'll have to work we'll we'll, we'll be working on um, as we develop this design issue. Shelly, goes forward. Shelly, may I add something? Yes, go ahead, Linda. Uh, I feel uh, that we're very very fortunate to get this kind of individualized response from Studio KCA. When we uh, put out an opportunity for a commission, we're always looking for something that is going to be as site specific as possible. And that's what they have given us. I really, really admire uh, <coughs> the foundational thinking about creating a conversation uh, between the sculpture, the creek, and the stage. And when you look at this site, it's a very complicated site uh, with the boxy uh, condos and the very geometric PRCA and behind that the, um, the garage. There are lots of rectangular shapes. And I feel that this um, 
organic and vertical um, sculpture is really just ideal for this site. And I, uh, I think that they have uh, given us, you know, the benefit of their really evolved thinking. And um, I would encourage the committee to approve this so that um, they can put as much time as possible into the uh, mechanics of the fabrication. Thank you, well said. Thanks, Linda. Does anyone else need, want to say anything? I can't see everybody, so. No, all right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I guess somebody did want to say something, huh? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> And the last word by the dog. <laughs> well, please give our thanks and our congratulations to Leslie, by the way. Thank you both very much. Uh, it's our pleasure. I, I'm happy to be a part of this. We're both happy to be a part of this. So. Beautiful design. Good. All right. Thank you. So I think we're looking for a motion. All right. Anyone like to make a motion? to uh, consider this for the final design. Make the motion to approve uh, Jason's design for the final. A second. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? Shall we take a vote? All in favor say aye or give me your thumbs up. Aye. 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 All right, I think that was everyone. All opposed say nay. Looks like we have a unanimous vote for the approval. Yay. Thank you. Thank you so well, much. We appreciate the vote of confidence and we're gonna do our very best. That's all I can say. So. <laughs> we're excited. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Thank, Thank you, Jason. Shall I get off the call now or is there if more? You are welcome to leave if you want. We have a few more business items. Okay. Well, I'm going to go to bed then, but uh, good night. And yeah. uh, thank you. Talk soon. All right. Good thank night. Thank you so much. Awesome. And next is our PRCA updates from Chris Azukian. Hi, everyone. Um, I wanted to share uh, a short video with you of the steel topping out that we released right after steel topping out last month. And then I'll give a short update because since we have a short meeting, so... Lots of short stuff. So here we go. Let me share my screen. Chris is glowing. Yeah, I don't know why my camera is so fuzzy these days, but glowing, your glasses, fuzzy. Your glasses are blue. All right, <laughs> it's getting dark out there. Let's see, um, bear with me for a second. I'm trying to find my uh, YouTube screen here. You might have a little smudge on your lens that's causing that. Let's see here, here we go. Uh, there's, no, uh, there's no audio, so just video.
There we go. So that was taken uh, in uh, about a month ago on September 10th, uh, when we had the final steel topping out ceremony. Many of you signed the beam. Thank you. You were, you'll be immortalized in the building. Um, so uh, things are going well. Construction is uh, moving ahead. We did take a, a short break there with the fires, uh, five days or so. But all, all of this is netting out to, uh, to actually not uh, thus far impact the schedule uh, that much. Where uh, the, the net impact of COVID as well as uh, the fires are about 20 days or so. Uh, right now we are anticipating the building uh, being completed end of August of 2021 and then taking two to three months to move in before we open to the public. So uh, however um, there are still a number of milestones ahead uh, for enclosing the building and commissioning and other things. So uh, I would not be surprised if that slips a little bit, probably into early 2022, but um, we're still tracking um, uh, for around that time period to be open. Uh, as I mentioned last month, we're also uh, closely monitoring the situation of gatherings in the world, uh, as we all are. Uh, with a vaccine and COVID. And so um, we like to think that a year from now, things will be uh, back to normal, whatever that means. Uh, but who knows? We also thought that kids will be back in school or <laughs> right now. So things, uh, uh, things are fluid. Uh, we're um, also looking at different scenarios as far as our lodging tax fund, which is the majority of support for our center. Uh, that fund has been impacted by the lack of travel and hotel stays, and uh, we're literally monitoring that month to month to, to see if uh, we want to be mindful of sticking within that budget as we open. Uh, uh, so uh, there is a lot of moving parts right now. Uh, the opening, whenever that happens, will be incredible, I promise you. It's the question of scope um, and what uh, that first year or the first few years of scope of programming will look like between our four key areas of, uh, of the center, which uh, I, I'll mention again, which is professional presenting, a uh, resource for the community as far as rentals, arts education, as well as community outreach. So we're working with those four key pillars, we call them for the center. Um, so we're also um, working on branding in the website. Uh, th this is a several month process, uh, which uh, won't come to fruition until spring of next year, but that's happening. Um, and uh, we're also going to update the city's uh, project site uh, coming up soon. Uh, many of you probably haven't even visited that site, but it's an informational page really about the project. Um, uh, prca.beavertonoregon.gov. Uh, it's a landing page there that we're going to uh, um, update with volunteer to start capturing people's uh, information as far as volunteer opportunities for those people. I do get emails uh, once or twice a month of people saying, hey, I'd love to volunteer at the center when it's open. Uh, how can I do that? So uh, we're going to have a form there where we start capturing people's interests and information so that when we're ready to roll out, we can blast them and say, yes, come, come over and we'll have volunteer training to be an usher or a docent in the art gallery, that sort of thing. Um, that's really it for now. That's what's happening on the PRCA front. Uh, happy to answer questions. And as, as Councilor Sansusi mentioned, we are developing a long-term management ag agreement between the city and uh, the nonprofit, the Beaverton Arts Foundation, which will be uh, morphing into PRCA Inc. Uh, that's in process um, uh, and uh, uh, a work group uh, with myself and a few city staff members and the assistant city attorney is developing that agreement for eventual approval by council as well as the Arts Foundation Board. So, um, yeah, happy to answer questions. Anyone have any questions? Yeah, hey Chris, where that where was the beam put? Where what part of that building? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's a good question because it doesn't look like the highest point of the building. It's not the highest point of the building. It's because of the order of how we uh, we built this building. It's actually uh, ended up being on the stair tower, which is um, it's the 
uh, it's the stair tower uh, close to the artist entrance, which is between the two buildings, between the garage and, on Crescent, mm. between the, the garage and the PRCA. And um, the great thing is that uh, oftentimes these last beams are not visible. Once they're done, they're covered up, but this mm -hmm. one will be visible. So you can actually go in the stair tower, you go to the third floor um, and you'll, it's about 10 feet above you, you'll see the white beam sign. Awesome. Chris? Yeah, Rebecca. Um, I'm wondering about what we see behind you. Is that a rendering of what oh, the yeah. auditorium will look like? Yes, this is the interior rendering of the auditorium mm -hmm. looking out from the stage. Uh, wow. So we have this really beautiful interplay of the natural uh, uh, dug fur uh, finish as well as these ah. this beautiful blue uh, fabric for the seats. This rendering doesn't quite do it justice, but it's this really beautiful side mm -hmm. by side between uh, the blue, which represents the creek and water and life ah. coming into the building. Cool. Uh, who's, what's the company that um, is the uh, uh, like acoustic engineering company? company? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a uh, um, Michael Yantis from Stantec uh, up in Seattle is the acoustician on the project. And so a little bit more about that, that this facility is designed as a multi-purpose facility. In other words, it's not as reverberant as a classical concert hall, uh, but it's also not as dead as a, as a movie theater. Uh, movie theaters are uh, dead for a good reason for surround sound and such. It's really in the middle. So we'll be able to accommodate spoken word with uh, amplified sound with mic microphone and a PA system, uh, which needs a, a deader environment. And we'll also be able to accommodate uh, unamplified uh, classical music, chamber music, piano, et cetera, jazz, um, uh, with, a, with an or what's called an orchestra shell to kind of push the sound out to the audience. And uh, it's really, I mean, this, this rendering also doesn't do it justice as far as how intimate it feels. Uh, it's really surprising how intimate the place feels. Uh, it really, I, I think I mentioned this last time, the last seat uh, on the first floor, on the back seat, on the back wall is 65 feet from center stage, which is uh, just a hair longer than um, a bowling lane. So it's really close. You're gonna be able to really see the facial expressions of people on stage. Uh, and then I think the last seat in the balcony is only 75 feet. So it's, it's, it's a very intimate space that we're gonna really leverage for programming and, and marketing it that way as well. Sounds good. Anybody else? Ryan? Chris, uh, you're doing a fantastic job navigating your way through uh, opening a theater and during COVID and fire and all the other surprises that you're doing. I'm surprised you're as calm as you are. And um, uh, I just wanted to say, um, I appreciate everything that you're doing to uh, make this happen and, and guide everyone through it. So appreciate it. Thanks, Ryan. I really appreciate that. It means a lot coming from you. I have a lot of respect for all the work you've done too. And uh, in your past and also advising on this project. And uh, yeah, thank you. It's kind of, it's kind of you know, um, it's been liberating in a way to, the great equalizer, right? Because every every facility, every arts organization, large or small, is in the same boat right now. You know, we're all, this is a real coming together. And I'm confident that by the time we're open, uh, our story is going to be just that, come together again. You mm -hmm. know, and, and we're going to represent that in many ways for our community. Awesome. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments? I guess we'll uh, move to Beth Toby with the updates. Thank you, Shelly. Um, so um, I, ha I did have one update. Um, if you haven't looked at the BAM, the Beaverton Art Mix website yet, highly recommend that you do that. Um, I was just telling someone today that it's this wonderful, calm reprieve from <laughs> the craziness in the world right now. So uh, if you're anything like me and you're feeling a little bit like uh, the country and the world are going crazy, highly recommend just going and spending 
30 or 40 minutes on the BAM site. I mean, the artwork is just absolutely beautiful. Um, and you can find that by going to the city website, beaversinoregon.gov and then forward slash BAM. Or if you just Google BAM, you'll find it. Um, and the winners this year, uh, year are just breathtakingly beautiful. Um, and actually the show's up for the whole month. So normally it'd be an eight, you know, about an eight day event in October, but since it's virtual this year, it's going to be up for the whole month. Um, we have uh, received reports back from artists that we've already sold over $5,000 in artwork, which honestly really surprises me given everything that's going on, that it's an election year, everyone's attention is stretched among a million other things. So for us to have that already really surprised me and I think that's very exciting. Um, um, so, and the way that we have the website is set up. So if you go, you have to, you have to directly contact the artists and then you purchase it directly from them. We, we don't, we're not in the middle. Um, and that's how we did it this year, but I think it's going well. And then I just want to remind everyone that the voters forum starts in 10 minutes. <laughs> so if you would like to attend the voters forum, you can get to the link at beavertonoregon.gov forward slash voters forum or I'm sure you can Google Beaverton Voters Forum and you will find it. So that was all I had. Awesome. Make sure, everybody should make sure they see BAM for sure. It's wonderful. Shelly? Gina? Mm, Beth, um, how, how is the sculpture on Hall and Farmington that was vandalized? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we worked with the artist and she came and um, picked up the artwork. Um, she was going to try to look into whether or not she could fix it, but I think she's decided it's not possible to fix it. Um, so that's unfortunately where we've left it. Um, our public works removed the base. Um, the base has some repair issues anyway that we have been tracking. Um, so right now there's nothing there. We could potentially down the road talk about replacing something there. Um, but right now, yeah, it's gone and the artist has picked it up, unfortunately. Beth? Yeah. Um, any idea when Blessings is going to be in? I've been watching every time I drive up Paul. I'm like, oh, and they've been working there on that corner. Um, and I believe it should be going in at the end of the month, um, but I don't have an exact date yet. Um, I know mm -hmm. she's been working. She's actually, she's working remotely because of all the COVID craziness as well. Um, so um, I'll, I can send out an email update. I, so I can be more precise because I'm afraid I'm going to tell you the wrong thing. Yeah, it's okay. It's not yeah. critical. I was just curious if you knew. Yeah. But thanks. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, the uh, the the photos that she's been sending are exciting. It's beautiful. And it's big. It's those three pieces are going to be very large. And they were intended to be able to for someone to sit in them. That sounds beautiful. Wait, I have to call out Ryan's daughter that just said hi to us. Yeah, or, she's adorable. Ryan, let's see her. Oh my goodness. <laughs> How old Same is she, Ryan? What a cutie. How old oh, is she now? Nah, almost nine months. On oh the my 30. gosh. Wow. wow. She's crazy. Our little COVID baby. <laughs> Obviously teething. Yes, four T's right now coming in. Oh, wow. This is yes. one of the benefits of Zoom meetings, right? You would not otherwise be able to bring her. Yeah, person. right. Well, I, and I'm able to help Terry a little bit so, <laughs> while attending a meeting. So. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, are we, are we ready to wrap? <laughs> Okay, so I guess uh, meeting adjourned. All right, have Thank a good you, night, everyone. everyone. Great to see everyone. Yeah, take care, everyone. Be well. It's all work. Everyone. <laughs>